Welcome YouTubers to what is quite possibly my most exciting video that I've done to date for the Vive. So we're going to be covering a new hot topic which is uh, super sampling with some recent configuration options that were discovered in Steam VR. And we're going to be talking about how this completely changes the game in regards to how your content looks on the Vive. So strap yourselves in because this is going to be a good one. Okay, so super sampling has caused quite a bit of a shake-up in the uh, the Vive community and Steam VR overall. It is something that the uh, the Oculus has had for quite a while in its uh, in it, it buried in its configuration, but it is something that has only been recently discovered for the Vive. Now, super sampling is a, a bit of a hard thing to describe to some people, depending on how much you know about computers and resolutions and things like that. But the easiest way to understand it is to think of the Vive as having two separate monitors inside the headset. So the total resolution of the Vive is 2160 by 1200 resolution. Now, if you go down a bit deeper to that, there's actually two screens and each of them is 1080 by 1200 resolution. Anyway, this next bit gets a bit uh, confusing, and if you have a very short attention span, you might want to uh, have a power nap for five minutes while we go through this before we get into the more visual or eye candy part of this uh, this episode. So basically, the point of superscaling is for your computer to output a higher resolution than what the Vive would natively display. So when I say that, you, it's the equivalent of... Um, you know, having a high resolution camera with a lot of megapixels, taking a photo and then you're shrinking that photo down and you, you end up with more detail because you're condensing all that information into a smaller area. That's a very simplistic way of explaining it, but it's probably the, the best way I can describe it to the general audience. Now, if we have a look at this chart that was uh, published during a Valve developer conference, we can see that things get confusing very quickly, more confusing than you might think, in fact. So, as I was saying, that the native Vive screen resolution is 2160 by 1200, but inside Steam VR, it actually already applies a 1.4 times super sample to anything that is sent to the Vive. So, the actual native resolution of Steam VR is 3024 by 1680. So that's taking into account both eyes and adding them together. Now that resolution is your base resolution if you're using a 1.0 setting for super sampling. Now as you can see from these additional numbers, the screen resolution, it, it just gets out of control if we start playing with this super sampling setting. And you know, for example, the 2.5, we're looking at 7560 by 4200, which is just an astronomical resolution to try and run on current hardware with a single graphics card. Now, putting all that aside, the main advantages of using super sampling are that you see massive gains in things like uh, edge quality, so you don't see jaggies around objects as easily. It's very similar to anti-aliasing. And you also see great improvements in regards to texture quality when you're looking at uh, objects, walls, floors, things like that. So we're going to start at the beginning with this entire process and I'm going to take you through how to edit the Steam VR configuration to enable super sampling. Now, there are two ways of doing this. You can do it the manual way through the Steam VR configuration file, which is how I do it. But there is also a handy utility that was made by someone on Reddit, I believe, and that allows you to edit it without having to go through any files. It's just an application that you run. Anyway, we're going to start with my method first. So basically, you want to navigate to your uh, Steam folder. You want to go to the configuration subfolder, and then in that folder, you'll see a Steam VR configuration file at the bottom. So this file controls various aspects of Steam VR, and it's out of box configuration is it doesn't even have the setting in there that we need to, to change. So the first step is we need to add in this uh, new string, which is render target multiplier. Now that's in our quotation, and there is a colon, and then afterwards we have the multiplier value. Now if that's set to 1.0, 
it's basically means it's a one-to-one scaling, so nothing, no effect basically. At 1.5, it is a 1.5 times whatever resolution it would normally use, and so on. So 2.2.0 is two times, etc., etc., etc. Now, the important thing to remember here is that on the end of each line, there is a comma except for the bottom line, which is show mirror view. So it's easiest to put the render target multiplier somewhere further up, and then you just put the comma on the end, and that way you don't get confused if you're not used to working with this stuff. And then you just leave everything else as it is. So once we've done that, basically all we have to do is close the file and choose to save it. And what I like to do in this situation is I actually create a shortcut to that file and I put that on my desktop. So I don't have to go back through all those folders to get to the file again. I just put it on my desktop and whatever I change in there, it updates the file through the shortcut link. And that just makes things a little bit easier. And I actually find it easier than using the application that was uh, produced, which we're gonna go over now. Okay, so this utility is called Chaperone Switcher and it was made by someone called Belago. And it gives you some useful information about your uh, your Vive setup, such as serial numbers, um, your room size, render target multiplier, etc., etc., etc. So basically, we need to hit the little gear icon on the top left, which is like settings, and from there we can change our render target multiplier, and then we can hit save, and that updates the uh, the Steam file through the application. Um, like I said, you can choose to do it whichever way you want. I find it easier it's just to open the file on my desktop and change the setting I want rather than installing, or well, you don't have to install it, but having a, a separate application that you run and clicking the gear cog and everything like that. Choose whichever way you want and you shouldn't have any issues no matter how you do it. Now, the only important thing to remember here is that uh, because you're changing some settings in the core configuration, they don't actually take effect until you restart Steam VR. So basically I just close the application uh, when I've made the adjustments and wait for it to shut down and then relaunch it again straight away before the lighthouses or anything get a chance to power down. Anyway, enough uh, waffling on about how, how all this all works. So we're going to have a look at some games now. And our first one to have a look at is my old favorite Elite Dangerous and... What you're currently looking at is how it would normally look on the Vive. So things are reasonably blurry. They're not ideal for viewing in the VR headset. I've also overlaid my computer information in the top left for your convenience. So I've got my GPU clocks, my memory, uh, temperature, frame rate, and memory usage, things like that. Now, as you can see, it's, um, it's sitting at a healthy 90 frames a second, which is what's required for... Um, normal experiences in virtual reality and also keep pay special attention to the memory usage which is sitting at a reasonably low figure so now we're going to have a look at the 2.5 times super sampling setting now now as you can see the frame rate has basically completely dropped out we've gone from 90 frames a second down to 18 keeping in mind we're just sitting in a menu at the moment um, it is rendering background elements though, so it is a good test for what your frame rate will probably be like in game. And you'll also notice that the memory usage has basically doubled. But if you pay special attention to the uh, text in the menu, um, looking at the edges around objects and everything, you can see that there is a massive difference. So what we'll do now is we'll overlay the two of them and give you some idea. Just keep in mind the scaling's not the same because of the super sampling, so it's hard to overlay them precisely, but I'm doing the best I can. And now we'll uh, roll some in-game footage just looking around the cockpit. Unfortunately, I can't do the exact same thing each time to overlay them, so you just have to compare the two examples. But... I can tell you the biggest difference is with text quality and that is a really important thing with Elite Dangerous when you're looking around in the cockpit at all the, the HUD menus. Now moving on from Elite Dangerous, I wanted to have a look at one other game quickly which was A Chair in a Room, Green Water. And this is basically the complete opposite of Elite Dangerous. Rather than edge quality being a huge difference, uh, in this game it is the textures on the walls and the floors, things like that. So you'll notice that there's uh, posters and things like that that are basically unreadable with the standard settings. 
with sam- sampling turned on, they become completely readable, and it, it is a massive change to how this game feels when you're playing it. Anyway, that's enough uh, side-by-side comparisons for now. So what we're going to do is roll some various footage from games that I've recorded at 2.5 times and 2 times super sampling and give you some of my thoughts about this uh, new discovery for Steam VR. Now, the, the first thing I can say is that it, it's not a free ride. So this setting has huge implications for your computer hardware. You need a seriously fast computer to be able to handle this sort of content. So. To give people a bit of context, I'm using a 980 Ti graphics card that is water-cooled. It has a significant overclock applied to it to run these titles for this video. Now, I've been following some forums, keeping up with what other people are doing, and when it comes to Elite Dangerous, even people with 1080 graphics cards can't handle the 2.5 setting in Elite Dangerous. It's just simply too demanding for current graphics hardware. But at the same time, you can get away with a lot depending on the title that you're playing. So I've, you know, I've tested Apollo 11 VR all the way through. I've tested the blue. I've tested a chair in a room green water. And I find that pretty much all those games are playable with a super sampling setting of two. And you can get an amazing experience from it. Unfortunately though, it's not a, a flawless experience. There are a few little quirks in regards to Steam VR when you're using these settings. I have noticed in quite a few games that you get a uh, like a, a flickering black bar along the top of the screen depending on the game that you're playing and I have seen it across probably three titles so it's definitely something that is specific to Steam VR, not the games themselves. But at the same time, it only seems to occur during the menu scenes, and once you're in-game, it actually disappears. So it's not a huge issue, but it seems like it is something that is currently in beta stages. Now, moving forward, I'd like to see Steam VR adopt some settings when it's all finished. So basically, you can specify this super sample setting per game, rather than having a global setting that you have to keep changing depending on the, uh, the content that you're playing. But probably one of the biggest things that you need to keep in mind with this is that not every game supports this super sample option. So I tested a number of uh, games based on the Unreal Engine, such as uh, Brookhaven Experiment and uh, New Retro Arcade, and neither of those games benefited from this setting at all. They still seemed to take a frame rate hit for some reason, but the graphics quality didn't seem to improve at all, which is to me, it's not that surprising for the Unreal Engine because it has a lot of shortfalls when it comes to VR and it, it seems to be a bit of a, a bit archaic, to be honest. Regardless of all this though, if you have a graphics card that is capable of handling this sort of content, so I, I would say a 980 Ti would be the absolute minimum to get this done, then I, I suggest you definitely give it a go. Play around with the settings and see how your experience improves. Uh, for me, it is all about Elite Dangerous. Uh, the game is amazing uh, with the standard settings, with the immersion factor, but it goes to a whole different level when you start using super sampling. It becomes... It, it's like the very first time you saw full HD or 4K. That, that That's the best way I can compare it. And in many ways, it's actually like having a brand new headset it, it the characteristic of the vive completely changes when you start using it it's um even your uh, field of view in the vive seems to increase with this setting because of the uh normally the outside is slightly blurred due to the fresnel lenses but with the increase in resolution you're actually able to see further out before the image becomes unreadable anyway i think i've cracked on about this enough and uh i'm sure you guys will give it a go if you've got the hardware to handle it and in the meantime, I am going down to my local street corner to haul myself out so I can start saving money for the 1080 Ti or the new Titan when it comes out because I'm going to need at least one of these graphics cards to be able to run Elite Dangerous on the highest settings. And hopefully we see some sly support in the not too distant future for VR and that will open up some doorways for people to start cranking these settings right up and you know, getting everything that you can possibly get out of the Vive and Oculus headsets. Anyway, sorry if this uh, video bored you guys a little bit. I wanted to cover everything off in one video so everyone knows how it works and what you need to do to get it done. I'm uh, 
completely sold on it and like I said at the start it is very exciting for me because it feels like I have a whole new product without actually paying for it which is a very unique thing in this day and age. So I hope you enjoyed the video and expect my content to improve dramatically from here on. I mean the, the, the in-game captures look so much better using these settings and I'll be leveraging everything I can to bring you guys even better content into the future. Until then, check out some of my uh, previous content and I will see you guys in the next video. See you later.